Hey guys, John, Anti-Guru. Uh, another Anti-Guru video coming from the beach hut. Yes, I've left the garden and I've come back inside because that's where the studio is. And I wanted to deal with a subject. And the subject I want to deal with has been rattling around in the old head for a little while. And it's been rattling around in the old head because I've been doing a couple of them. And that is, hello Athena, and that is the purpose-built HMO. Now, I've done a, a Google search and I found only one or two little snippets of information that is floating around out there about the purpose-built HMO and how this is a, a development, I'm not even going to call it strategy, it's a development typology. So I wanted to just deal with it and, and go through the two cases that I've worked on in recent times that have been purpose-built HMOs. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, why, John? Why would you purpose-build an HMO when there are just so many houses out in the world for us to convert? And there are a couple of really good reasons why you as a developer would look at the purpose-built HMO model. The first thing is that you're an HMO landlord and what you're trying to do is make the transition from being a HMO landlord from owning a portfolio of property that you've bought, you've converted HMOs and you want to make that transition up into some new build. So that's the first reason maybe. And the second reason might be that actually when in areas where HMOs are heavily controlled. Let's look at the first thing and see where this takes us. I, when I'm talking to property developers, talk about doing their GCSEs. So I like to use analogies because analogies are easier for us to grasp as human beings. They're easier for us to, to conceptualize. So I like to use analogies to describe complex ideas. And the idea that you have to graduate up through the development scales, you can't just go from naught to 60 miles an hour in less than a second, unless, of course, you're driving a uh, aerial atom, uh, is quite well refined. And I call it the education analogy. So the education analogy works like this. You can't do decent A-levels unless you've got decent GCSEs. You can't do a decent degree unless you've got decent A-levels. You can't do a postgraduate degree unless you've got a degree. You can't do a doctorate unless you've got a postgraduate degree. So there are five stages, effectively, of formal education in the UK. Now apply that, apply that, dear viewer, to property development. If you think that your GCSEs are your very basic flips, light refurbs, and things like that. Then you graduate up into your A-levels. This could be HMOs, more slightly more complex forms of property management. Then we graduate up again to our undergraduate degree. There we are doing commercial conversions. And then we graduate up again to our postgraduate degree. There we are into new builds. Yes, I can't hold four fingers in the same hand. So I'm having to use the other one. So there we're having to do new builds. And then we graduate up finally into the doctorate where we are doing multi-million pound larger forms of development in the major spectrum. GCSEs, A-levels, undergrad, postgrad, doctorate. Works like that. So how do we then think about if we've done our A-levels, done our GCSEs, done our A-levels, so we're an HMO landlord, how do we then think about making a jump and making a jump into a conversion or maybe doing a degree. So, why don't we think about purpose-built HMO? I mean, doing a form of development that we know, doing a form of development that we understand in an area that we understand it, but purpose-built for our use. So we're not having to take a property, rip it, gut it, strip it, send it back to brick and then reconfigure it. What we're doing is configuring a property to our needs right away and building what we need. Now, there are some very well-defined benefits in doing this. Where we've seen it done before, the 
valuers are able to look at it from a variety of different angles. But worst case, they're gonna look at it from bricks and mortar. You're building a house. So your funding is based on the funding model for building a house, except your end user is gonna be an HMO and you apply specifically for an HMO, either in C4 or sui gen. And the ones that we've done before are both have gone both ways. Ones we've done for Andy and Lloyd up in Barrow have been C4s, five bedroom, five person. <coughs> it was a terrace of four HMOs effectively, right next door to their 31 bed HMO. And the one we've done for Dan Smith and James Day down in Kent were a pair of seven bed sui generis HMOs. That is purpose building an HMO. So let's look at the other side of things. Let's say you're in an Article 4 area, you're in an area of overt control, and you're in an area where you are struggling to meet your percentage points. So let's say you've got a 10% road, for example, and you are struggling to meet your 10%. And in Doncaster, it's no more than two properties, which is tough. That's a really tough hit. But in other areas, it's 10, 15, 20%. So let's say, for example, you find a nice building on a road that's a 10% road, or, or just under a 10% road, and you're gonna struggle to hit the 10%. But if you think about how percentages work, this makes sense. And I'll explain a rather rational answer to this in a minute. Let's say you find a building you can do a commercial conversion on. And as part of that commercial conversion, you can put in a couple of HMOs. You can make a couple of the flats HMO. So you're in Article 4, you're in, you're in a bit of a sticky spot. But let's say you can put 10 dwellings, 10 new flats into that area, into that road. 10 new flats could very well skew the percentage the right way. It could skew the percentage down. Enough for you get to get your two purpose-built HMOs in your block. Or let's say it's only the difference of one house. By skewing the percentages down, by putting more dwellings into a road, you can then put more HMOs into that road because you're skewing the number of dwellings in that street you're skewing the number of percent, uh, the percentage points in those areas in your favor. Now I'll tell you how this has worked. The uh, HMO policy in Portsmouth has zones which are skewed and they are zone skewed because they either have a massive great block of flats in them or they have a property that is being developed that will create a massive great block of flats, therefore creating a skew. And the one I always think about here is near to where our offices is on Victory Row. Victory Row, we dealt with an HMO appeal on Victory Row and sadly we were unsuccessful. But we appealed on one point of principle, which was that the whole street was HMOs bar this one property. This poor owner had this property in the middle of a whole street of HMOs. That's bad. And the opposite the building in question was Brunel House. And Brunel House had and was being built out for 158 units. All right? 158 flats in a block. Literally a stone throw. You could you could you could lob a tennis ball at the building and you would bounce off the building and still be able to catch the tennis ball. It was that close. What the inspector said is that the argument was rational if the flats were completed. That the percentage would absolutely skew down if the flats were completed. If they weren't completed, he couldn't take them into account. But the percentage would skew downwards dramatically. 10 houses in the street, right? All of them are HMOs, but you're just about to flood the area with 158. So you'd have 168 and 10 out of 168 is less than 10%. That's what the inspector was saying. And that is the point here. That is the the, the Article 4 skew solution. The final thing it allows you to do, if you're going for purpose-built HMO, is you can target land. 
So you're not looking for homes anymore. You're not looking to take another home out of the equation. You're looking for land. And then you can be a lot more strategic about where you are finding your land. You could find land that is old buildings, old factories, whatever, and you could seek to get buildings on that. And Ian Lloyd's was an old pub and pub garden. The pub was converted, the land was available. We then got planning permission for them for four purpose-built HMOs on that site. And then they wanted a second planning application for four three bed. That's what we got. But the land was there. The first rule in business is to use the resources that you have. Uh, Chris Curry, who was the chief executive of Acorn Computer. And if you don't know who Acorn Computer is, look them up. They started the silicon boom in the United Kingdom with, with Sinclair. It was part of the big battle in Cambridge. But fundamentally, you've got this land that you can do something with. Now, if you think about properties that have land, you could look at pubs. Andy and Lloyd's was a pub conversion that went pub conversion and then four purpose-built HMOs, right? You could look at pubs, and I'm, I've got three on the books at the moment to look at for clients. Well, we're not touching the pub, we're touching the land. We're touching the bit to the side of the pub, and that is a story for another day. But you could do purpose-built HMOs inside of those wrappers. I was asked this week about doing a purpose-built HMO down in Dartford. Amazing. Let's see how this works. I really hope that's been interesting. You know, it's one of these things, I do love doing these videos, and I do love putting these thoughts out there for you to like, comment, subscribe, etc. By all means, put comments in the post if you think I'm talking complete tosh. If you want me to do a case study on, for example, the purpose-built HMOs that we got up in Barrow, that'd be brilliant because I can show you the plans and show you how they worked and show you how we structured the application in order that it was more palatable to the council. Let's see if that's of interest to you guys. One final thing before I go, I've been accused of being a guru, <laughs> which I find hilarious because I uh, subscribe to being an anti-guru. I actually looked the definitions up the other day. Uh, guru is a wonderful uh, title bestowed upon a person who's seen as an expert or a teacher. It's actually Hindi. Um, I think it's the one thing I've seen one of the other gurus get right. The term anti-guru is also defined. There's a, there's a, there's a Wikipedia entry for anti-guru and that's a person who ascribes to not being a guru. So I just want to explain this for five, two minutes. I just want to cover this. The whole point about me calling myself an anti-guru is I'm trying not to be like the other property gurus. I'm trying to be the polar opposite, which is no course, no upsell, no con, no scam, no nothing. Right, it's just information. Now, if you like the way we're doing things, great, I love it. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. If you, if you think we should go a different way, then let me know. Because fundamentally, I'm very much about what you guys want us to do next. I hope that's been interesting. I, I really enjoyed talking about Purpose Build HMOs. It's, it's, it's kind of fun. And if you want to see the case study, then drop a comment. In fact, let's try and get a like target on this. If we can get like 30 likes on this video, then, then we'll do uh, the case study. All right, guys. Have a good day. See you soon.